Hi, I'm Jamsi. I'm a finance professor and welcome to another video. So, today, we continue our discussion on the mortgage markets. In our last video, we ended with some of the reasons why we study the mortgage markets separately from other areas or subsectors in the financial markets. So, for today, we're going to continue on our learning on the mortgage markets by understanding the primary mortgage markets. So, under the primary mortgage markets, there are four basic mortgage categories. So, what are these four? We have first the home mortgages or basically these are the home loans. These are mortgages used to purchase one to four family homes. Second, we have the multifamily dwelling mortgages. By the term itself, this particular type of mortgage is used to purchase apartment complexes, condominiums, and townhouses. Third, we have commercial mortgages. And these are mortgages used to purchase real property for business purposes, such as your office buildings and your factories. Number four, last but not the least, are the farm mortgages. And oftentimes, these mortgages are used to finance the purchase of farms and other agricultural lands. To read more about our lesson on the mortgage markets, you may use Financial Markets and Institutions 7th Edition by Saunders. So, that is the main reference for this lesson. So, now that we know the four basic mortgage categories, let's understand the basic characteristics this time of a mortgage. So, mortgages have characteristics that is specified in a mortgage agreement. And some of the characteristics are a collateral, a down payment, a mortgage backing, and even the mortgage maturities. So let's get through uh, each of these one by one. When we talk of a collateral, we're talking about a lien that is placed against the property financed using the mortgage proceeds. So this is the property that is usually bought using the mortgage proceeds. So what does that mean? So it means that the lending company or the financial institution that you dealt with still has the right or still has the power to take away that piece of property that you bought using the mortgage proceeds until you have fully paid your mortgage. So, it serves as a second layer of security for these financial institutions because they will not transfer ownership on a certain piece of property that was bought using mortgage proceeds unless it has been fully paid. So, aside from having a collateral, it is also required that the mortgagee or the borrower must pay a down payment. 
or pay a portion of the purchase price at the day of the closing. So, just like in any other transaction, usually when we place a large order, usually the vendor will require a down payment before they can start working on the item. In a mortgage, a down payment is required so that the bank or the financial institution or the lending company is assured that the mortgagee has skin in the game. So they're also required to shell out a certain amount of pro of money rather to secure the property. Third, who backs the mortgage? So in the US, in which our um, discussion is centered on as the US mortgage market is more well-known and more prevalent than its Philippine counterpart, it is required that these mortgages are insured. So for short, they need to insure the mortgage. And that's when we answer the question as to who is backing the mortgage. So a specific mortgage can either be conventional or federally insured. So when we talk about federally insured mortgages, these are mortgages that are usually originated by private firms. So when we say mortgages that have been originated, meaning these are loans that have been granted by private lending institutions, but the payment is guaranteed by the U.S. federal government through the Federal Housing Authority or the Veterans Administration. And oftentimes, if a piece of mortgage is federally insured, it is because you have qualified to the stringent or you have qualified and passed the stringent application process. If your mortgage is federally insured or meaning backed by the U.S. government, these loans are very limited in size and varies per state depending on where the house or the piece of property is going to be purchased and because it is the U.S. federal government that guarantees or that ensures that the mortgage will be paid, these types of mortgages have little to no down payment. All right? On the other hand, we have what we call the conventional mortgages. So when we say conventional mortgages or conventionally insured mortgages, these are guaranteed by private guarantors or private mortgage insurance companies. And oftentimes, if you engage the service of these private mortgage insurers, Every time you buy a property or on the day of closing, you are required to purchase property mortgage insurance. So what are these mortgage insurance? These are contracts that are purchased by the borrower that guarantees to pay the financial institution or the lending institution to pay the difference between the value of the property and the balance that is still unpaid on the mortgage. So, meaning having a conventionally insured property ensures that in the event that the lender dies or the lender is unable to pay for um, the mortgage, 
the property or the um, property mortgage insurance will kick in and take over the repayment of the outstanding balance of the mortgage. All right. So that is the case. So in the US, when you engage directly with a financial institution on a new home, that's primary mortgage market. If you engage on a pre uh, and bought a second hand home, that's a secondary mortgage market transaction. And if in the event you are actually engaging in a second secondary mortgage transaction, it's oftentimes that it oftentimes happens that the secondary mortgage will not buy conventional mortgage if the loan ratio is more than 80%. So it means that in order for a secondary buyer to push through with a purchase transaction of a second-hand home, the unpaid balance must at least be below 80%. All right, so that is the importance of the insurance of a property that is being mortgaged. Lastly, we have the mortgage maturity. So this actually varies in term. And the full payment of the mortgage is achieved by amortization. So, one of these peculiar modes is what we call the balloon payment mortgage. So, that is one way of repaying a mortgage. In a balloon payment mortgage, this is a type of mortgage maturity that requires a fixed monthly interest rate payment for a period of three to five years. So for short, for the first three to five years of your mortgage, you are going to pay a fixed interest rate. And the full payment of the mortgage principal will be required towards the end of the payment term. So that's why it's called balloon because the amount that you have to pay will increase as the term for repayment progresses. So if you are undertaking, let's say, a 15-year loan, you start off paying smaller amounts in the early years of your mortgage but you know in the last 3 to 5 years of your mortgage you are expected to pay a lot more that is how a balloon payment mortgage works next up on the characteristics of a mortgage we have Interest rates. Of course, we already know that interest rates are the cost of borrowing money. And it is there to finance the purchase of real property. So interest rates in this regard are inclusive of the prevailing market rates, fees, and others. But before I proceed to the discussion on discount points, let me continue my discussion on the mortgage maturities. We have previously discussed a few minutes ago the concept of balloon mortgage payments. 
aside from balloon mortgage payments as a mode of repayment for a mortgage, we also have two additional uh, mortgage maturities, if I may say so. One of them is what we call a fixed rate mortgage. So if the balloon payment mortgage mortgage rather entices the borrowers by asking them to pay um interest expense or in the interest first on a loan before having them pay the full amount of the loan in the later life of the repayment term in the fixed rate mortgages at the name as the name suggests locks down the borrower's interest rates and requires the borrower to make monthly payments rather over the life of the loan. So because the interest rate is fixed, you are also expected to make fixed monthly payments over the life of the loan. That is the concept of fixed rate mortgage. Lastly, we have the adjustable rate mortgages. So, as the name suggests, these types of mortgages will have the interest rates adjusted because the interest rates are tied to the market interest rate index. So, if the prevailing interest rate moves, the rate on your mortgage will actually also move. Therefore, the payments on these types of mortgages can change over the life of the loan. All right, so I hope that is clear on the additional notes on mortgage maturities. Right, so now that discussion is pretty much done, let's move forward to the next point of discussion. Let's continue on with the discussion on discount points as a mortgage characteristic. So what is a discount point? Discount points are fees or payments that are made when a mortgage loan is issued at closing. It effectively reduces the interest rate on a mortgage. So it means that if you find your interest rate too steep, you can actually make additional cash payments so that your interest rates will be lowered. So, how do we compute for a discount point? One discount point is equal to 1% of the principal value of the mortgage. Let me repeat that. One discount point is equal to 1% of the principal value of the mortgage. So for example, in a $100,000 mortgage principal that requires the borrower to pay two discount points at closing, it means that the borrower needs to pay an additional $2,000 on the day of closing aside from paying the down payment. Alright? So, aside from this, a mortgage has other fees. So, meaning these are fees that are used to cover the mortgage issuer cost of processing the mortgage. So these are just ancillary charges to the transaction. And 
Lastly, we also have mortgage refinancing where the borrower is able to take out a new mortgage and uses the proceeds of the second mortgage to pay off the existing mortgage. So when you refinance your current mortgage, you actually take out a second loan and use the proceeds of that second loan to extinguish the first loan, which is fairly unique in the mortgage market. Aside from these points, it is also fair to mention that in the mortgage markets, the required down payment is at least 20%. So if you cannot make the minimum required down payment on a property, all the more that a property needs to have a private mortgage insurance as discussed in the previous slide. So let me repeat that. In the mortgage markets, the minimum down payment is 20%. And if the borrower is unable to make the minimum down payment requirement, they will be required to purchase the property mortgage insurance. So that is the reason why if the property has a loan balance of 80% or more, then there will not be a second mortgage because they are required to provide a PMI. All right. So, lastly, before we end the second half of the video, let's talk about the amortization schedule. So, in a mortgage, we usually pay off our loans following an amortization schedule. And when we follow an amortization schedule, we make sure to make fixed monthly payments as borrowers that generally consist of partial repayments of the principal and interest on the outstanding balance of the loan. And the amortization schedule shows how the monthly payments are broken down between principal and interest. I will be uploading a second video that will show you how to construct an amortization schedule using Microsoft Excel. All right, so here is an example of an amortization schedule. This particular amortization schedule is not for a home, but for a vehicle. So in this particular example, you will notice three things. You will notice that the monthly payments are fixed and the interest payments that is allocated monthly varies because in this particular amortization schedule, the interest is calculated on a daily basis. So as you can see here, there is a column for interest days. So at the end of this, once we're able to calculate the allocated portion for interest payments, any excess will then be applied towards the repayment of 
the principal balance. This is your amortization schedule. So there will be, like I said, a separate video that discusses this thoroughly. So this ends the second part of our lecture on mortgage markets. Thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!